Welcome. Now then, today we have not just one, we also have <laughs> two cameras and they're video cameras, which I'm gonna show today. I'm really excited about these because you know, like, I got both of these. I was just gonna get one, right? But then there's something about each of them. Yes, I've gone down the rabbit hole of analog video and I'm absolutely loving it. PCBWay have now become a one-stop solution. Other than doing high quality PCB boards, they now do CNC services as well as 3D printing. If like myself, you're into doing electronics projects and require PCBs, then do check out their services on their website. These have, of course, I've already unboxed these. I don't want to do unboxings too much because to be perfectly honest, I'm not a big fan of them myself. I know some people like them, which is why sometimes I do I show a little bit of the unboxing, but... Mm. And also, it's getting cold. Now this beauty here is the Hitachi VKC600, right? Now this is a Vidicon camera. Vidicon means it's a CRT camera. <laughs> yeah, you can use CRTs, for those of you who do not know, to capture video. This is before CCDs and CMOS and all this, um, the sensors. Now Vidicon is a techno you know, it's the tube technology, but there's variants, right? I'll go through all these a little later on. I find this, it's built so well, it is solid, that lens is just like the ones you'd find on the SLRs and the other film cameras. Now this, of course, it does not record. It is no, this is why it's not called a camcorder, it's called a video camera. Now you have to connect this to a VTR. Which is which provides this non power, but also gives this control. VTR video tape recorder, yeah, it's, it's like a field recorder, and uh, you connect it to them with this kind of somewhat standardized connection, which is high rose really pain in the freaking rear because I've, I've tried looking around because I'm gonna have to do a lot with these now <laughs> you know so I've already done my research on them power supply here now this is from in fact the early 80s yeah and I think it's 1980 this of course goes into the power supply here but then you have you know it, it provides it power but then you have the video uh, composite video coming from here which goes into here there's more leads behind here. So it comes with an extension lead cable. And this is to kind of like, you know, have a bit more mobility. Inside here, we have the key of all this and how to actually use it without a VTR. And then you just connect that on this side. So I'll move this aside and I'll show you and I'll unpack the other one and I'll show you the, them both side by side. Good thing about this, I can use this um, power supply and this breakout cable and use it on the other one too. So yeah, it's justified getting this one as well. <laughs> right. I have to say something about this one. I have fallen in love with this. So it comes with its own VTR cable and it comes with a microphone. Looks like a stereo microphone, actually. And I think this is the one I'm gonna be using the most. Got your viewfinder here. Again, just monochrome, they tend to be. Viewfinders, by the way, for those of you who do not know, it's just a little CRT, it's actually a little CRT TV. <laughs> yeah, in there, a CRT a monitor in there. So. Uh, this says iris. If it's too much light, you can close it a bit and it'll so we have here color balance. You move it to this side, it goes towards a red tint. That side goes towards a blue tint. So it's just like warming slightly and cooling the image, depending on what you're filming. And you kind of will need to use that. Now then, if you go to the back of this beautiful machine here. So, you, so this is your external power. This is the VTR you connect it with to your VTR, or you connect it to that power supply or, you know, However way uh, you have here a video out BNC and you have a Genlock BNC so this is uh, interesting selector switch external DC 
VTR and you know mixer. Now then, do you remember when I was messing around with the Genlock and the Commodore Amiga, right? And I had that face shift issue. Oh no, hemorrhoids, <laughs> that's irritating. Scrolls, why? This is okay. Right, well this, look closely. It seems to have SC phase and fine adjust and horizontal phase here. So I think just a little tweak of this and the Amiga will be fine. Now I've still got my Amiga stuff out from last time. What I'm going to do actually, I'm going to connect it to this monitor since it's got composite input. So I'll just use this because it's a really nice monitor, this Philips one. Panasonic one is 350 TV lines. And, but standard VHS actually is um, only 240 TV lines, so you lose a lot of you lose some resolution. Okay, so let's okay, to the composite in. Okay, so camera goes in here. a little time to heat up warm up there we go look at that it looks so beautiful in this it's that flaring which I love this is the main reason why I've wanted a, a CRT camera or a tube camera for so long it's years I've been wanting this effect showing you through a CRT which is you're not getting the full impact right Right, so now it's directly going into a capture device. And is any hint of a bright light? I'm not sure if that's damage or what. So yeah, this is from the the actual Vidigon one, right? The Vidigon one, the Hitachi one, right? Yeah, it's a little difficult to kind of get like a clear image. There's like two bright lights shining on me. <laughs> this is the one here. And there's one over there which is like blinding. Now I don't know what the deal is with this tube if you know it's on its way out or if there's something up with it or it's you know if this is how it looks. There's, there's a few quirks with it. Now I don't know if that's got anything to do with the tube or not so let's connect. I've been itching to connect my favorite one. Yeah? <laughs> this is the Panasonic G1 and you can see why I like it so much. Let's talk about the, the technology of the, the Vidicon and you know so forth. Both of these cameras are Vidicon. They've got Vidicon technology, which is CRT technology, using a CRT to capture an image or video image. Now Vidicon is the technology itself, right? Now that was the original one. But then each company had their take on it. Like Hitachi, I think it's Hitachi who did Sadikon. And then you have Panasonic or Matsushita who did uh, Nuvicon. And then you've got others, which is like Plumicon and, you know, Pasicon. And there's Trinicon. Which one do you think that is? <laughs> I think a lot of you will know. So this is what the Hitachi one looks like in like complete full on sunlight. The colors have just popped out and you know as you can see the red on my my top and the blue. Yeah it looks like you need some <clears throat> soft light for this. Uh, it's almost like with these um, tube cameras the condition has to be just right for them to capture a good image. 
Um, it's difficult. I mean, it's quite interesting because it, it allows you to be creative. I mean, you get a certain effect from them, which is, uh, I do like that. The stupid sun's gonna be in the house now. I learned a lot. I actually really enjoyed the studio work in um, you know, my photography course. And we learned about hard light and using honeycombs and things like this, uh, as opposed to soft light using soft boxes and you know, sheets and things like that. This is my brother's old cassette. He recorded Amiga music on here. But yeah, this is from like 1990. And I like the fact that he used a metal tape for Amiga music. <laughs> Shows how much I actually meant to him. Actually, I remember him playing this a lot. This track. Here. So it's, I don't know what exactly he's put on here, but... The reason why I did this was simply because to try and get the V used to kind of jump up and down a bit more. I know this tr I know this cassette's got DNA Dream on it. That's why uh, that DNA Dream is so nostalgic for me because I heard it like in so many so many times when he was getting ready. He put DNA Dream on and you could hear him spray the order and, and you could smell it a little bit and <laughs> you know it was kind of nice. It's got those memories for me. Again, I don't know these tracks. If you know, if any of you know it, can you please list it? And uh, please list them with the timestamps. So I know which one you're referring to. <laughs> oh my god, it's super crack! <laughs> He recorded Super Frog on a metal tip. I love my brother. <laughs> and every time I um, I hear them, I kind of smell that insignia deodorant <laughs> that he always used to put on his room smell though. I can just, you know when you kind of like have a, a, a memory attached to another memory. There it is! <laughs> oh. oh, which one was this? I know this one. I used to listen to it a lot, I like it. I know it's from a demo or something like this, but which one? Oh my god, I haven't heard this since for ages from this back then. I like this bit. I always liked this bit. Yes, this is the best thing in this challenge. I haven't heard this track since like... Then you have another variant of these, this Vidicon, which is Plumigon. Uh, that's not as responsive to, you know, the, the flaring um, that I really like. The, the reason why I actually got these, this, you know, this sort of kind of effect, which I really like. And I like the way it sort of, you yeah, can play with light. I've always loved doing that, just playing with the light. So yeah, I'm glad I didn't get any of the Plumigon ones. But I'm not sure which company that is, to be honest, because I know each company has like obviously Trinicon. I'm not gonna say it. Yeah, don't don't wait for me to say it. I'm not. I want you guys to say it in the comments because I know you know what it is because <laughs> of what it sounds like. But yeah.
Mm. <laughs> but yeah, it's sort of, by the way, it's just um, a book like, it's like clip your book in. Yeah, clip your toes in 24. Still get to play with the light flare. So happy I got it. <laughs> Obviously, uh, I wouldn't ever like point a laser in there or anything like this. It's that would screw it up. Like anything that's intensely bright, like the sunlight. Sunlight would screw this up in an instant. You know, these two people have to replace the two. It'll just. It's kind of like how your eye works in a way. If you think about it, like people who have suffered from sun blindness or who do suffer from sun blindness, you know, it's you see this splodge or this trail or however the sun has damaged, you know, you see that uh, all the time, you know, there's no getting rid of that. And that's what, you know, happens to these tubes. Once you've done it, you've done it. So this is one thing that scares me about using these outside and I know I love summer and all that stuff but I'm gonna have to really be careful if I'm using these outside, you know, to kind of not point them at the sun and obviously only myself and Rich are allowed to use these cameras because I'm gonna want to take this out in the summer. In fact, we already, Rich is talking about taking these out. So I'm gonna be doing a comparison between, you know, four of these, four cameras, right? Two of these Vidicon ones, this Panasonic one and the Hitachi one, and also the DSLR as a control. I mean, it's not gonna be like a scientific, you know, test or anything like this. Uh, it's just one more out of curiosity. Uh, the fourth one, I'm gonna add a sharp camcorder to the mix here. This is a CCD camcorder, VHSC. I've rigged up the Commodore Amiga here, and um, I used to do nostalgia time gameplays by recording and opening a DSLR in front of a, a PVM or BVM and record the image that way, record the CRT image that way. And um, yeah, just to kind of try and convey that CRT effect, which it has. And in the most part it did. I mean, obviously it wasn't, it wasn't exactly like how it is in person, but it was, it was pretty good. Oh yeah. god, yeah! Yes! I'm busy talking to you about your three cameras. I'm gonna do the same with this. The reason why is because the two cameras, they have this trailing effect, this light trailing effect. And I wanna see what it looks like. I'm actually curious. Just so you know, none of these recordings will be captured on the tape. They will all be captured directly on the digital. I want you to see exactly what these cameras capture instead of having, you know, something like these tapes reduce the quality and, uh, you know, the resolution of the captures. So now this is just the DSLR itself, kind of like a control test in a way. I don't know, there's something about Targon 1, everyone talks about Targon 2 all the time. There's something about Targon 1 I like. I mean, I do like Targon 2, don't get me wrong, but it's not just something about Targon 1 I really like the music, the atmosphere, a CRT, you're recording a CRT. <laughs> okay, so with this one, I cannot seem to get rid of the moiré effect. Again, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I kind of feel like I'm playing on a really bad LCD screen, like a really old one that's on its way out. So we have here the Panasonic G1 connected. Yeah, some trailing going on there. I'm just, I'm actually looking at the, um, the screen I'm recording this, the monitor screen. So it's like so much delay and everything. I'm just curious myself on how it looks. I can't get my eyes off the monitor screen. <laughs> I 
It's just like... It feels like... Uh, just like the CRT cameras without the trailing. You know, the color reproduction and everything. It depends on which camera you get, of course, or camcorder you get. Okay, I'm gonna try something that's a little simpler in graphics. Oh, you freak! By the way, these comparisons that I've just done, they're not, you know, to see which camera is the better one. You know, in that way, technically, you can just say, oh, the DSLR is the most clearest, it's the best color reproduction, and you know, oh, video over, and the video, that's it. <laughs> you know, it's not about that. Yeah, I'm an art-oriented person, right? So if I want to shoot a, something and I want to create, that's what I do with my videos, I, I like to create a certain mood. You know, and the mood has to be right, and it's like I'm trying my best to create a certain atmosphere. So, the DSLR won't cut it sometimes. The color is all too balanced sometimes, it's too sharp, it's too, you know. And I don't want to put fake effects on. Now the image this Hitachi VKC600 gives is very... Mm, gritty and dim. I want to see if I can improve it even just a little bit because you know it is a bit for some reason it just feels like it can do better than it actually. and this has got a lot of variable resistors in there. If I know CRTs it'll have focus control and beam control and things like this so let's see what we can do with this. Now just like opening a CRT you have to be very careful with this and the viewfinder here all it is is a tiddly little CRT <laughs> monochrome one. As you can see here, that is a little tube. This is the yoke. That is the electrode. And yes, the same thing applies to this um, as I demonstrated in the uh, Amiga Genlock setup video. Even when they're off, they will hold some charge somewhere. Well, the tube actually acts as a capacitor. So yeah, you have to be very careful with this. But I have to say, it's quite cute. <laughs> Just don't mess with it as if it's cute. <laughs> and don't let the um, the input voltage of the camera fool you, 12 volts. So I just want to be very careful with it. This seems to be the, the line output transformer or the flyback transformer. Okay, so I think I've finally found the focus on this thing. That is much better. Okay, so we've done as much as we can from this side. I mean, we've adjusted the focus a little bit, which is, you know, it's a bit cleaner than it was. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's better. Now I have a suspicion that on this side, there's gonna be more to do with the, um, the adjustments of the color. You can see the uh, Vidicon tube much easier now. 
Okay, so I want to put the white balance in the center here. Okay, so that is the white balance. Get it nice and centered. I have to say that's a much nicer and much more balanced image. Let me just sort the brightness out because I think that might be too much. God, I love that flaring effect. It just looks like fire flame type of effect there. The ripply effect on the um, the light. Love that. That's what I bought these for. Thing is, you have to be, you have to do this without a magnetic screwdriver because any small magnetic field, as you can see, near the tube. That's all I'm doing. So you really have to do this with a. Let me just see if I can. Okay, so the Panasonic G1 have it here. The starting picture. I mean, it's a nice picture. It's not, it's not bad or anything. But if you can tweak it, make it nicer, make it a bit more refined, then yeah, I'll be really happy about that. It's got two screws here. It seems like it's. Uh, I really hope this is much easier to get into than not freaking um, hit that G1. Everything was, uh, by the way, in the center, the white balance, everything. Okay, this just makes me a little nervous because I absolutely love this and I don't want to damage it. Um, but it's not as bad to get into as I thought. I was all, I was taking out these top and bottom screws and all stuff and all this, but I just keep these two and just if you. Oh crap! Okay, <laughs> this part came out, revealing quite a lot actually. And that is because I took these screws out, and that takes the back off. Yes, I'm crazy. That's what Rich is. Rich is gonna be like shaking his head <laughs> when he sees this because he's not gonna know until he watches it. I tend to kind of like my videos, keep them to myself until he watches it because he says I don't want any spoilers. <laughs> right, so let's just deal with one side at a time. And here, this reveals the two. Um, I'm gonna put these back before goofing around with it. Ooh. Yoke assembly. Matsushita electronic. Okay, so time to turn this on. Okay, so that's the tint between... Oh, that's the white balance. I think that's blue. Actually, no, it's more greeny. Cyan and magenta, okay. Okay, green. Tweaking it just a little bit, you can actually get quite an accurate representation of what it looks in real. Just run the next to it. Oop, that's the iris control. Ah, okay, so that's the density of the tube. Ooh, okay. Okay, so revealing more variable resistors here. Okay, so I tweaked this. Uh, to be fair, it was already Quite nice I didn't need to do too much to it but I've tweaked it and like improved and on the image a little bit the color re reproduction <laughs> color reproduction seems um, more accurate to what is real as in like I'm actually looking at the real thing so yeah everything looks much nicer now I'm actually quite excited because the the Hitachi one, I was thinking, okay, what's up with it? Da, da, da. I mean, sometimes these settings drift, and to be honest, they, they weren't that hard to get to, get to as I had expected initially. Uh, so I think they've got that in mind. I mean, it's the nature of analog; things drift, and as of course, these thing, these two things need recapping, and you know, obviously, with the capacitors over time, you know, they they start drying up and values change, so things drift, settings drift. Okay, so I figured out when this camera was made by goofing around with the date. <laughs> um, it starts at 1983. So this camera is as old as I am. <laughs> oh, you can do negative positive image. I forgot about that. So you, this will actually, if you have color negatives, you can actually view them under this. So you can do video titling as well. Very basic, yeah, but it's there.
do another in the back garden. I'm just gonna use the um, Panasonic G1 Pro now though, because I know the Hitachi one needs adjusting. Door mechanism frozen. Right, it's that one red apple. I'm gonna take a film medium format shot of. Just setting this stuff up is so involved and takes a lot of time, especially since it's mains powered at the moment. Somebody else wants in on the action as well. <laughs> a bit too cold for his little paws though. <laughs> wants to be around me all the time. Do I have an extender for the um, composite cable? I don't like doing it so much. I mean, it's not so bad with this, but I don't like doing it because, I mean, composite, it's analog, and the more you extend the cable, the, the less the quality is of the signal. You know, you degrade the quality more. It's hard to tell the color balance because the monitor is... Um, viewfinder itself is monochrome so you cannot tell the color balance You can see it's practically glistening. Just need some light on it to shine on it so that it... I don't want to touch it too much in case it kind of drops. <laughs> but yeah, ideally it needs some hard light on it so that you know it can. <coughs> Habibi, I'm working. No food. Time. You had your breakfast. You can see it kind of glistening, but it, it needs <laughs> it needs something a bit more intense. You can see the shards glistening. Wise man, staying inside. <laughs> He'd be a wise man. Isn't he? <laughs> he goes shy. He goes shy. <laughs> and yes, I've got uh, vintage retrochrome loaded into this camera. So I'm, I've never used it before, so I'm really curious about it. You know when you just kind of decide what angle you want it and you, you just like where you want the background to be because to be honest I don't want the fence to be in the background of this shot but then if the fence is going to be blurred out but I want it to be something natural like this green but then again I can sort of I could do two shots <laughs> so photography is about experimentation Take another one from this angle.
I'm going to slightly overexpose this one by one step. So now it's recording the voice. It wasn't before. I was just talking to myself. This is the thing you have to deal with when you're on your own doing all this, right? Um, with, you know, big production people, they have someone who deals with the audio, someone who, so you don't have to think about all this stuff, yeah? Just one person thinking about every little aspect. Setting up is like, it's really involved, all right? You have to think about the angle, the focus, the everything, you have to, literally everything. You have to be the subject, you have to be the photographer. <laughs> So it's like, it is quite a lot to deal with. Um, but, so you make stupid mistakes like this. The sound is off or this is off or that is off. So yeah, I'm just one person. <laughs> I'm not like, you know, any big sort of big YouTube channel or anything like this. So yeah, I'm just kind of, I don't want to stay that way to be honest. Anyway, man, forget all that. I'm out of here and I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> that was actually a fun session because, um, you know, you've probably noticed that I didn't actually... He looks got his pop in over this. <laughs> anyway, I didn't release anything last week. And that... This video was actually going to be last week's video. But it's just felt... Uh, something just felt unfinished for me. It was going to end at the uh, the game comparison. And that's it. But then I just... I, 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 Decided to tweak it, you know, open it. I mean, that was, okay, that was very brave because um, I've only just met these cameras, right? I've only just like these. Must you come now? Neelix is being wise and staying inside. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going out there, you're crazy. I mean, he joined me for a short while. That's why his paw prints are all, all over the table. <laughs> But yeah, we do prefer summer. And yeah, he does, he asks me to come outside and play. And especially in the summer, you know, he gets excited when we go outside. So when I went outside, he kept going back in and then coming out. And his little paws are like freezing. Plus. And he's probably complaining as well. He's like meowing at me, thing. <laughs> Close the dark doors, you mad woman. <laughs> anyway, so I've got something else to use on my, well, two other uh, cameras that I can use on you know, the Genlock, the Amiga Genlock. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, by the way, I did uh, uh, two videos. Uh, they're not really a series of videos. They're each videos in their own right. You can watch them individually, but they go well together. They pair it up together. So you can watch one and any other. I'll link them in the description below and on the end screen. Anyway, sorry, I think I just whacked the microphone. <laughs> Apologize for that. I swear I could hear somebody singing. Yes, it is. It's somebody singing right at the top of his voice. Oh, well. Let him sing. Sing his heart out. He was the same guy who was singing in, in the summer. <laughs> My summer specials that I did. Uh, same guy who was singing. I guess he wants to be famous and thinks I'm a big TV person. <laughs> he probably heard me and started yelling, saying, I've got a good voice. That's somebody singing on the top of their voice, all right? Oh, well. He'll be disappointed if he ever knows that I'm not involved in TV production. <laughs> anyway. What was I doing? Yes.
thanks so much to all my patrons for supporting my channel, especially to you very kind top tier supporters of mine who deserve an extra special thanks. Rich Garbe, Axel Dominator, Electronscape, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Starglider77, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, Chris Sebelinski and Veronica. Have a lovely evening everyone. Until next time, adios!